The Tunisia Campaign was a series of battles that took place in Tunisia during the North African Campaign of the Second World War, between Axis and Allied forces. The Allies consisted of British Imperial forces, including Polish and Greek contingents, with American and French corps. The battle opened with initial success by the German and Italian forces but the massive supply and numerical superiority of the Allies led to the decisive defeat of the Axis. Over 230,000 German and Italian troops were taken as prisoners of war, including most of the Africa Corps. Background equals Western Desert equals, The first two years of the war in North Africa were characterized by chronic supply shortages and transport problems. The North African coast has few natural harbors and the British base at Alexandria on the Nile Delta was some 2,100 km by road from the main Italian port at Tripoli in Libya. Smaller ports at Benazi and Tobruk were 1,050 km and 640 km west of Alexandria on the Litterania border running along a narrow corridor along the coast. Control of the central Mediterranean was contested by the British and Italian navies, which were equally matched and exerted a reciprocal constraint supply through Alexandria, Tripoli, Benazi and Tobruk, although the British could supply Egypt via the long route through the Atlantic around the Cape of Good Hope and by the Indian Ocean into the Red Sea. The chronic difficulty in the supply of military forces in the desert, led to several indecisive victories by both sides and long fruitless advances along the coast. The Italian invasion of Egypt by the 10th Army in 1940, advanced 97 kilometers into Egypt and more than 1,600 kilometers in a straight line from Tripoli, 600 kilometers from Benazi and 320 kilometers from Tobruk. The Western Desert Force fought a delaying action as it fell back to Mersa Matlour, then began Operation Compass a raid and counterattack into Libya. The 10th Army was destroyed and the WDF occupied Al Alaila some 970 kilometers from Alexandria. With the arrival of the German Africa Corps the Axis counter-attacked in Operation Sonbloom and in April 1941 reached the limit of their supply capacity at the Egyptian border but failed to recapture Tobruk. In November 1941 the Eighth Army recovered, helped by the short supply distance from Alexandria to the front line and launched Operation Crusader, relieving the siege of Tobruk and again reached El Aila. The 8th Army was soon pushed back to Ghazala west of Tobruk and at the Battle of Ghazala in May 1942, the Axis pushed them all the way back to El Alamein, only 160 km from Alexandria. In 1942, the Royal Navy and Italian Navy were still disputing the Mediterranean but the British hold on Malta allowed the Royal Air Force to sink more Italian supply ships. Large quantities of supplies became available to the British from the United States and the supply situation of the 8th Army, eventually becoming overwhelming. With 8th Army no longer constrained, the Axis were driven westwards from Egypt following the Second Battle of El Alamein in November 1942. Equals Operation Torch equals. In July 1942, the Allies agreed that proposed relatively small-scale amphibious operations to land in northern France during 1942, Operation Sledgehammer which was the forerunner of Operation Roundup, the main landings in 1943, were impractical and should be deferred. Instead it was agreed that landings would be made to secure the Vichy territories in North Africa, Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia and then to thrust east to take the Axis forces in the western desert in their rear. An Allied occupation of the whole of the North African coast would open the Mediterranean to Allied shipping thus releasing the huge capacity required to maintain supplies round the circuitous route via the Cape of Good Hope. On November 8, Operation Torch landed Allied forces in Algeria and Morocco with the intention that once Vichy forces in Algeria had capitulated, an advance would be made to Tunis some 800 kilometers to the east. Prelude equals Allied plans equals because of the nearness of Sicily to Tunisia, the Allies expected that the Axis would move to occupy the country as soon as they heard of the torch landings. In order to forestall this, it would be necessary to occupy Tunisia as quickly as possible after the landings were made. However, there was a limit to how far east the torch landings could be made because of the increasing proximity of Axis airfields in Sicily and Sardinia which at the end of October held 298 German and 574 Italian aircraft. Algiers was accordingly chosen for the most easterly landings. 
This would ensure the success of the initial landings in spite of uncertainty as to how the incumbent French forces would react. Once Algiers was secured, a small force, the Eastern Task Force, would be projected as quickly as possible into Tunisia in a race to occupy Tunis, some 800 kilometers distant along poor roads and difficult terrain during the winter rainy season, before the Axis could organize. However, planners had to assume the worst case regarding the extent of Vichy opposition at Algiers and the invasion convoys were assault loaded with a preponderance of infantry to meet heavy ground opposition. This meant that at Algiers the disembarkation of mobile forces for an advance to Tunisia would necessarily be delayed. Plans were thus a compromise and the Allies realized that an attempt to reach Bizerta and Tunis overland before the Axis could establish themselves represented a gamble which depended on the ability of the Navy and Air Force to delay the Axis build-up. The Allies, although they had provided for the possibility of strong Vichy opposition to their landings both in terms of infantry and Air Force allocations, seriously underestimated the Axis' appetite for and speed of intervention in Tunisia. Once operations had commenced and despite clear intelligence reports regarding the Axis reaction, the Allies were slowed to respond and it was not until nearly two weeks after the landings that air and naval plans were made to interdict Axis sea transport to Tunis. At the end of November, Naval Force K was reformed in Malta with three cruisers and four destroyers and Force Q formed in Barney with three cruisers and two destroyers. No Axis ships sailing to Tunis were sunk in November but the Allied naval forces had some success in early December sinking seven Axis transports. However, this came too late to affect the fighting on land because the armoured elements of 10th Panzer Division had already arrived. To come to the surface threat, Axis convoys were switched to daylight when they could be protected by air cover. Night convoys resumed on completion of the extension of Axis minefields which severely restricted the activities of Force K and Force Q. Equals Tunisia equals. Tunisia is rectangular, with its northern and much of its eastern boundary on the Mediterranean coast. Most of the inland western border with Algeria is astride the western line of the Atlas Mountains which run from the Atlantic coast of Morocco, 1,900 km east to Tunis. This portion of the border is easily defensible at the small number of passes through the two northern Euro-South lines of the mountains. In the south, a second line of lower mountains limit the approaches to a narrow gap, facing Libya to the east, between the Matmata Hills and the coast. The French had earlier constructed a 20 km wide and 30 km deep series of defensive works known as the Marath Line along the plain, to defend against an Italian invasion from Libya. Only in the north was the terrain favorable to attack. Here the Atlas Mountains stopped near the eastern coast, leaving a large area on the northwest coast unprotected. Defensive lines in the north could deal with approaching forces, while the Marath Line made the south secure. In between, there were only a few easily defended passes through the Atlas Mountains. Tunisia has two big deep water ports at Tunis and Bizert, only a few hundred miles from Italian supply bases in Sicily. Ships could deliver supplies at night, safe from RAF patrols and return the next night, while Libya was a full-day trip, making supply operations vulnerable to daylight air attacks. In Hitler's view, Tunisia could be held indefinitely, upsetting Allied plans in Europe. Equals run for Tunis equals. By November 10, French opposition to the torch landings had ceased, creating a military vacuum in Tunisia. Lieutenant General Kenneth Anderson, commanding British First Army, immediately ordered the 36th Infantry Brigade Group, which had been the floating reserve for the Algiers landing, eastward by sea to occupy the Algerian ports of Bougui, Philippeville and Barney in the airfield of Jajeli, preliminary to advancing into Tunisia. The combined chiefs of staff had decided that with the forces available, Torch would not include assault landings close to Tunisia. Anderson needed to get his limited force east quickly, before the Axis could reinforce Tunisia but the Allies had only two brigade groups and some additional armor and artillery for the attack. The French governor in Tunisia, Admiral Esteva, was afraid to support the Allies or oppose the Axis. He did not close airfields to either side and the Germans moved first and by November 9, there were reports of 40 German aircraft arriving at Tunis and by November 10, Aerial reconnaissance reported 100 aircraft. 
Two days later, an airlift began that carried over 15,000 men and 581 long tons of supplies and ships brought 176 tanks, 131 artillery pieces, 1,152 vehicles, and 13,000 long tons of supplies. By the end of the month, three German divisions, including the 10th Panzer Division, and two Italian infantry divisions had arrived. Walther Neuring was assigned command of the newly formed XC Corps on November 12 and flew in on November 17. The French military commander in Tunisia, General Barakopurait, moved troops into the western mountains of Tunisia and formed a defensive line from Tebasorq through Marjaz al Bab. There were two roads eastwards into Tunisia from Algeria. The Allied plan was to advance along the two roads and take Bizet and Tunis. On November 11, the British 36th Infantry Brigade had landed unopposed at Bougie but supply shortages delayed their arrival at Jigeli until November 13. Bone Airfield was occupied following a parachute drop by 3rd Parachute Battalion and this was followed on November 12, by 6th Commando seizing the port. Advanced guards of the 36th Infantry Brigade reached Tabaka on November 15 and Jbele Bayod on November 18, where they met Axis forces. Further south, on November 15, a U.S. parachute battalion made an unopposed drop at Uxley Baines, capturing the airfield and advanced to take the airfield at Gafsa on November 17. On November 19, the German commander, Walter Neuring, demanded passage for his forces across the bridge at Meges and was refused by Barrack Copyright. The Germans attacked twice and were repulsed but the French defensive success was costly and lacking armor and artillery, were obliged to withdraw. Despite some Vichy French forces, such as Barrack Copyright as siding against the Axis the position of Vichy forces remained uncertain until on November 22, the North African Agreement placed French North Africa on the Allied side allowing the Allied garrison troops to be sent forward to the front. By this time, the Axis had been able to build up a corps, and outnumbered the Allies in almost all ways. Battle Two Allied brigade groups advanced towards Jbele Bayod and Bijar respectively. The Luftwaffe, happy to have local air superiority while the Allies' planes had to fly from relatively distant bases in Algeria, harassed them all the way. On November 17, the same day Neuring arrived, the leading elements of the British 36th Brigade on the Northern Road met a mixed force of 17 tanks and 400 paratroops with self-propelled guns at Jbel Abiod. The German paratroopers, Luftwaffe and Italian fire support from the 1st Mountain Infantry Division's Supriga knocked out 11 tanks but their advance was halted while the fight at Jbel Abiod continued for nine days. On November 22, Tanks from the Italian 50th Brigade forced U.S. paratroopers to abandon Gafsa. The two Allied columns concentrated at Jbele Bayod and Bijar, preparing for an assault on November 24. The 36th Brigade was to advance from Jbele Bayod toward Mata and 11th Brigade was to move down the valley of the river Merjda to take Marjaz al Bab and then to Tibilba, Chidiada, and Tunis. Blade Force an armoured regimental group was to strike across country on minor roads in the gap between the two infantry brigades towards Sidi Nsir and make flanking attacks on Turborba and Gdida. The northern attack did not take place because torrential rain had slowed the build-up. In the south 11th Brigade were halted by stiff resistance at Medjes. Blade force passed through Sidi Nsir to reach the Chugai Pass. North of Turbord a part of Blade Force infiltrated behind Axis lines to the newly activated airbase at Gdida in the afternoon and destroyed more than 20 Axis planes but lacking infantry support, withdrew to Chubai. Blade Force's attack caught Neuring by surprise and he decided to withdraw from Medjes in strength and Gdida, only 30 kilometers from Tunis. The 36th Brigade's delayed attack began on November 26 but they were ambushed with a leading battalion taking 149 casualties. Further attacks were driven back from cleverly planned interlocking defences. A supporting landing by one commando 23 kilometres west of Bizerta on November 30 in an attempt to outflank the Jeffner position failed and the unit had rejoined 36th Brigade by December 3. The position remained in German hands until the last days of fighting in Tunisia the following spring. Early on November 26, as the Germans withdrew, 
11th Brigade were able to enter Mejas unopposed and by late in the day had taken positions in and around Tiburba, which had also been evacuated by the Germans, preparatory to advancing on Gdiada. However, on November 27 the Germans attacked in strength and 11th Brigade's attempt to regain the initiative in the early hours of November 28, attacking toward Gdiada airfield with the help of U.S. armor, failed. On November 29, Combat Command B of U.S. 1st Armored Division had concentrated forward for an attack in conjunction with Blade Force planned for December 2. They were forestalled by an Axis counterattack, led by Major General Wolfgang Fischer, whose 10th Panzer Division had just arrived in Tunisia. By the evening of December 2, Blade Force had been withdrawn, leaving 11th Brigade and Combat Command B to deal with the Axis attack. This threatened to cut off 11th Brigade and break through into the Allied rear but desperate fighting over four days delayed the Axis advance and permitted a controlled withdrawal to the high ground on each side of the river west of Turborba. The Allied force initially withdrew roughly 9.7 km to the high positions of Longstop Hill and Buaukas on each side of the river but concern over the vulnerability to flanking attacks prompted a further withdrawal west so that by the end of December 10, Allied units held a defensive line just east of Mejas El Bab. Here, they started a build up for another attack, and were ready by late December 1942. The slow build up had brought Allied force levels up to a total of 54,000 British, 73,800 American, and 7,000 French troops. A hasty intelligence review showed about 125,000 combat and 70,000 service troops, mostly Italian in front of them. The main attack began the afternoon of December 22. Despite rain and insufficient air cover, progress was made up the lower ridges of the 900-foot Longstop Hill that controlled the river corridor from Meges to Tibilba and thence to Tunis. After three days of to-and-fro fighting, with ammunition running low and Axis forces now holding adjacent high ground, the Longstop position became untenable and the Allies were forced to withdraw to Meges and by December 26, 1942 the Allies had withdrawn to the line they had set out from two weeks earlier, having suffered 20,743 casualties. Equals aftermath equals. French politics. While the battles wound down, factionalism among the French again erupted. On December 24, Frenet Section Noir Darlan was assassinated and Henri Giraud succeeded him as High Commissioner. To the frustration of the Free French the U.S. government had displayed considerable willingness to make a deal with Darlan and the Vichyists. Consequently, Darlan's death appeared to present an opportunity to bring together the French in North Africa and Charles de Gaulle's Free French. De Gaulle and Giraud met in late January but little progress was made in reconciling their differences or the constituencies they represented. It was not until June 1943 that the French Committee of National Liberation was formed under the joint chairmanship of Giraud and de Gaulle when de Gaulle quickly eclipsed Giraud, who openly disliked political responsibility and more or less willingly from then on deferred to the leader of the Free French. Command changes, Neuring, considered by most to be an excellent commander, had continually infuriated his superiors with outspoken critiques and was replaced. When the command was renamed the 5th Panzer Army and Colonel General Hans Jar one quarter or G.N. von Arnhem arrived in Tunis unannounced on December 8, to assume command. The army consisted of the composite infantry division von Broek von Mantoufel in the Bizet area, the 10th Panzer Division in the centre before Tunis and the 1st Mountain Infantry Division Supriga on the southern flank but Hitler had told Arnhem that the army would grow to three mechanised and three motorised divisions. The Allies had tried to prevent the Axis build-up with substantial air and sea forces but Tunis and Bizerta were only 190 km from the ports and airfields of western Sicily, 290 km from Palermo and 480 km from Naples, making it very difficult to intercept Axis transports which had the benefit of substantial air cover. From mid-November 1942 to January 1943, 243,000 men and 856,000 long tons of supplies and equipment arrived in Tunisia by sea and air. Eisenhower transferred further units from Morocco and Algeria eastward into Tunisia. In the north, the 1st Army over the next three months received three more British divisions, 1st Infantry Division, 4th Infantry Division and 46th Infantry Division, 
joining the 6th Armoured Division and 78th Infantry Division. By late March the British Nine Corps headquarters had arrived to join V Corps in controlling the expanded army. On their right flank, the basis of a two-division French 19 Corps was assembling. In the south was a new US-2 Corps, to consist of the US 1st Infantry Division, 3rd Infantry Division, 9th Infantry Division, and 34th Infantry Division and the 1st Armoured Division and 2nd Armoured Division. Giroud refused to have the French Corps under the command of the 1st Army in it and the US-2 Corps remained under command of AFHQ. New Ford airfields were built to improve air support. The US also began bases in Algeria and Tunisia, to form a large forward base at Maynassi, on the eastern edge of the Atlas Mountains, well placed to cut off the Panzer Army in the south from Tunis and the 5th Panzer Army in the north. Kasserine. Equals Prelude equals. During the first half of January, Anderson had with mixed results kept constant pressure through limited attacks and reconnaissance in strength. Arnhem did the same and on January 18, launched in turn a boat I elements of the 10th Panzer and 334th Infantry Divisions attacked from Pont du Fas to create more space in front of the Supergo Division and forestall an Allied thrust east to the coast at Enfordeville, to cut Rommel's line of communication. The westward thrust against the right wing of the British V Corps at Bou Arada had little success but further south his attack against French positions around the hinge of the western and eastern dorsal succeeded, advancing 56 km south to Auzelcha and 40 km southwest to Rabawa. The poorly equipped defenders resisted well but were overwhelmed and the equivalent of seven infantry battalions cut off in the mountains. Anderson sent the 36th Brigade to Rabara and requested Lloyd Fredendel to send Combat Command B from 1st Armoured Division to Auzelcha, to come under Dewan's orders on arrival. Fierce fighting lasted until January 23 but the front was stabilized. The obvious lack of Allied coordination led Eisenhower to change the command structure and on January 21, Anderson was made responsible for the coordination of the whole front and on January 24, his responsibilities were extended to include the employment of American troops. That night, Dewan accepted the command of Anderson, confirmed by Giroud the next day but with forces spread over a 320 km front and poor communication in four days to speak to the Corps commanders, the practical difficulties remained. Eisenhower appointed an air support commander, Brigadier General Lawrence S. Kitter, for the whole front on January 21. Erwin Rommel had made plans for forces retreating through Libya to dig in in front of the defunct French fortifications of the Marath Line. The Axis forces would control the two natural entrances into Tunisia in the north and south, with only the easily defensible mountain passes between them. In January, those parts of the German-Italian Panzer Army on the Marath defences were renamed 1st Italian Army, separate from the units he had facing the West Indus Sail. On January 23, 1943, the 8th Army took Tripoli, by which point the army retreating through Libya was already well on its way to the Marath position. Part of the US-2 Corps crossed into Tunisia through passes in the Atlas Mountains from Algeria, controlling the interior of the triangle formed by the mountains. Their position raised the possibility of a thrust eastwards towards Sfax on the coast to cut off the 1st Italian Army at Marath from von Arnhem's forces to the north around Tunis. Rommel could not allow this and formed a plan for a spoiling attack. Equals Battle of Sidi Bouzid equals. On January 30, 1943, the German 21st Panzer and three Italian divisions from von Arnhem's 5th Panzer Army met elements of the French forces near 4D, the main pass from the eastern arm of the mountains into the coastal plains. Fredendel did not respond to the French request to send reinforcements in the form of tanks from 1st Armoured Division and after desperate resistance, the under-equipped French defenders were overrun. Several counter-attacks were organized, including a belated attack by Combat Command B of the US 1st Armoured Division, but all of these were beaten off with ease by von Arnhem's forces which by this time had created strong defensive positions. After three days, the Allied forces had been forced to pull back and were withdrawn into the interior plains to make a new forward defensive line at the small town of Spiedler. In Operation Fra One Quarter Linkswind, 
Von Arnhem ordered four armoured battlegroups forward on February 14 in the area of Sidi Bouzid held by 34th Infantry Division's 168th Regimental Combat Team and 1st Armoured Division's Combat Command A. The defenders' dispositions were poor, with concentrations dispersed so that they were unable to be mutually supportive. By February 15, CCA had been severely damaged leaving the infantry units isolated on hilltops. Combat Command C was ordered across country to relieve Sidi Bouzid but were repelled with heavy losses. By the evening of February 15, three of the Axis battle groups were able to head towards Spietla, 32 kilometers to the northwest. Pushing aside the remains of CCA and CCC, the battle groups were confronted by Combat Command B in front of Spietla. With the help of air support, CCB held on through the day. However, the air support could not be sustained and the defenders of Spietla were obliged to withdraw and the town lay empty by midday on February 17. To the south, in Operation Morgenluft, an Italian 1st Army battle group made up of the remains of the Africa Corps under Karl Bar one Court Alaus had advanced toward Gafsa at dusk on February 15 to find the town deserted, part of a withdrawal to shorten the Allied front to facilitate a reorganization involving the withdrawal of French 19 Corps in order to re-equip. US 2 Corps withdrew to the line of Dirinama Kasserine Gaps Bieber with 19 Corps on their left flank vacating the eastern dorsal to conform with them. By the afternoon of February 17, Rommel's troops had occupied Feriana and their lips southwest of Kasserine, forcing the evacuation on the morning of February 18 of the Lipt airfield, the main air base in British First Army's southern sector. Equals Battle of Kasserine Pass equals. After further discussion, the Commando Supremo issued orders on February 19 for Rommel to attack through the Kasserine and Spieber passes toward Thala and Lekef to threaten First Army's flank. Rommel's original proposal was for a limited but concentrated attack through Kasserine to confront two core strength at Tar Copyright Bessa and gain vital supplies from the U.S. dumps there. Although he was to have 10th and 21st Panzer Divisions transferred to his command, Rommel was concerned that the new plan would dilute his force concentration and expose his flanks to threat. On February 19, 1943, Rommel, Having now been given formal control of the 10th and 21st Panzer Divisions, the Africa Corps Battle Group as well as General Mess's forces on the Marath defences, launched what would become the Battle of Kasserine Pass. Hoping to take the inexperienced defenders by surprise, he sent the light armour of the 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion racing into the pass. Colonel Alexander Stark Stark Force, a brigade group made up of US and French units, was responsible for the defense of the pass. It had not had time to organize properly but was able to direct heavy artillery fire from the surrounding heights which brought the Africa Corps Battle Group's leading mechanized units to a halt. Before they could continue, infantry had to be sent up into the high ground seeking to eliminate the artillery threat. A battle group under Hans Georg Hildebrand, including tanks from 21st Panzer, were advancing north from Spietli toward the Spieber Gap. In front of the hills east of Spieber they were brought to a halt by 1st Guards Brigade and 18th Regimental Combat Team which had strong field and anti-tank artillery support and were joined by two infantry regiments from 34th Infantry Division. By the morning of February 20, the bitter hand-to-hand -hand fighting in the hills above Kasserine was continuing while the Africa Corps Kampgrupp and a battalion from the 131 Armoured Division Centro and more artillery, prepared for another attack through the pass once it had been joined by a 10th Panzer Division battle group from Spiedler. The morning attack made slow progress but the intense pressure applied during the renewed attack that afternoon triggered a collapse in the Allied defences. Having rolled through the Kasserine Pass on the afternoon of February 20, units of the Centauro Division headed west toward Tar Copyright Bessa, meeting little or no resistance. Following them came the von Broek battle group from 10th Panzer, which forked right onto the road to Thala where they were slowed by a regimental armoured group from 26th Armoured Brigade. Their tanks outgunned, Gore Force sustained heavy losses but bought time for Nick Force, a composite force from British 6th Armoured Division, based around 26th Armoured Brigade group with extra infantry and artillery to prepare defensive positions further up the road. Meanwhile, 
Fridendel had sent 1st Armoured Division CCB to meet the threat to tar copyright Besser. By 1 p.m. on February 21, Von Broek's Battle Group were in contact with the Duggan 26th Armoured Brigade Group on the Thala Road and making slow progress. Rommel took direct control of the attack and forced the defences by 4 p.m. However, 26th Brigade Group were able to withdraw in reasonable order to the next, final, defensive line in front of Thala. Fighting at this position started at 7 p.m. and continued at close quarters for three hours with neither side able to gain a decisive advantage. Nick Force had taken a heavy beating and did not expect to be able to hold out the next day. However, during the night a further 48 artillery pieces from U.S. 9th Infantry Division arrived after an 1,300 km trip from Morocco on poor roads and in bad weather. On the morning of February 22, as von Broek prepared to launch his attack, his front was hit by a devastating artillery barrage. Surprisingly, Rommel told von Broek to regroup and assume a defensive posture, so surrendering the initiative. The 21st Panzer Battle Group at Spieber was making no progress. Further south, the Africa Corps Battle Group on the road to Tar Copyright Besser had been halted on February 21 by CCB's armor and artillery dug in on the slopes of Jebel Hamra. An attempt to outflank them during the night of 21 February was a costly failure. A further attack early on February 23 was again beaten back. In a dispirited meeting on February 22 with Kesselring, Rommel argued that faced with stiffening defences and the news that the 8th Army's lead elements had finally reached Medinin, only a few kilometres from the Marath line, he should call off the attack and withdraw to support the Marath defences, hoping that the Kasserine attack had caused enough damage to deter any offensive action from the west. Kesselring was keen for the offensive to continue but finally agreed that evening and Commando Supremo formally terminated the operation. The Axis forces from Kasserine reached a Marath line on February 25. Equals aftermath equals, action then abated for a time, and both sides studied the results of recent battles. Rommel remained convinced that U.S. forces posed little threat, while the British and Commonwealth troops were his equal. He held this opinion for far too long, and it would prove very costly. The U.S. likewise studied the battle, and relieved several senior commanders while issuing several lessons learned publications to improve future performance. Most important, on March 6, 1943 command of the U.S. II Corps passed from Fredendal to George S. Patton, with Omar Bradley as assistant corps commander. Commanders were reminded that large units should be kept concentrated to ensure mass on the battlefield, rather than widely dispersed as Fredendal had deployed them. This had the intended side effect of improving the fire control of the already strong U.S. artillery. Close air support had also been weak. At the Casablanca conference, it had been decided to appoint General Sir Harold Alexander as Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Forces in French North Africa. This came into effect on February 20 and at the same time, in order better to coordinate the activities of his two armies in Tunisia, Eisenhower at AFHQ brought 1st and 8th Armies under a new headquarters, 18th Army Group, which Alexander was to command. Shortly after taking up his new appointment, Alexander reported to London. I am frankly shocked at the whole situation as I have found it. Real thought has been the lack of direction from above from the very beginning resulting in no policy and no plan. And was critical of Anderson although this was later felt to be a little unfair. Once he had been given control of the whole front at the end of January, Anderson's aim had been to reorganize the front into consolidated national sectors and create reserves with which to regain the initiative, the same priorities articulated in Alexander's orders dated February 20. On February 21, Alexander declared his objective to destroy all enemy forces in Tunisia by first advancing 8th Army north of Garba S, while the 1st Army mounted attacks to draw off reserves which would otherwise be used against the 8th Army. The armies would gain airfields for the Allied air forces. The coordinated land, sea and air power of the Allies would draw a net round the Axis forces in Tunisia by April 30. To meet the timetable set at the Casablanca conference to allow Sicily to be invaded during the favorable weather of August. 
the Casablanca Conference had agreed to reorganize the air forces in the Mediterranean to integrate them more closely. Air Chief Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder was made Commander of Mediterranean Air Command, responsible for all Allied air activity in the Mediterranean and Major General Karl Spartz became Commander of the Northwest African Air Forces under Tedder, with responsibility for all air operations in Tunisia. By February 23rd, Air Marshal Sir Arthur Coningham had succeeded Kitta at the Allied Air Support Command, which became Northwest African Tactical Air Force under Spartz, with the Desert Air Force supporting 8th Army, under its operational control. Coningham found that the air organization in Tunisia was that of the Western Desert in 1941 when he had first assumed command of the Desert Air Force. The lessons of the Desert Campaign had not been used in planning for torch, which constrained the ability of the air arm already short of aircraft and supplies, to provide tactical support to the Army during the run for Tunis. Coningham unified the British and American operational commands and training them in new operational practices. The Axis created a combined command for the two armies. Hitler and the German general staff believed that Arnhem should assume command but Kesselring argued for Rommel. Arnhem was appointed to command the new Army Group Africa on February 23. Southern Front. Equals Battle of Medellin equals. Eighth Army had been consolidating in front of the Marath defences since the 17th February and launched probes westward on the 26th February. On March 6, 1943, three German armoured divisions, two light divisions, and nine Italian divisions, launched Operation Capri, an attack southward in the direction of Medellin, the northernmost British strong point. British artillery fire was intense, beating off the Axis attack and knocking out 55 Axis tanks. With the failure of Capri, Rommel decided that the only way to save his armies would be to evacuate them. He therefore left Tunisia on March 9 to see Hitler at his headquarters in Ukraine, to try to convince him to abandon Tunisia and return the Axis armies to Europe. Hitler refused and Rommel was placed, in strict secrecy, on sick leave. Von Arnim became commander of Army Group Africa. Equals Battle of the Marath Line equals. Montgomery launched Operation Pugilist against the Marath Line on the night of 19 March 20, 1943. Elements of the 50th Infantry Division penetrated the line and established a bridgehead west of Zarat on 20 March 21, but a determined counterattack by 15th Panzer Division destroyed the pocket, re establishing the line by March 22. Four days later, March 26, X Corps drove around the Matmata Hills, capturing the Tobago Gap and the town of El Hama at the northern extreme of the line in Operation Supercharge II. The flanking movement made the Marath Line untenable. The following day anti-tank guns from German and Italian units checked the advance of X Corps in an attempt to gain time for a strategic withdrawal. In the next 48 hours the Axis defenders pulled out of the Marath Line, establishing a new defensive position 60 kilometers to the northwest at Wadi Akarat near Garba S. Equals Garba S equals. The reorganized U.S. II Corps advanced from the passes again and got behind the Axis lines. The 10th Panzer Division counterattacked at the Battle of El Guetta on March 23. The German tanks rolling up lead units of the U.S. forces, ran into a minefield and U.S. artillery and anti-tank units opened fire. The 10th Panzer Division lost quickly 30 tanks and retreated out of the minefield. A second attack in the late afternoon, supported by infantry was also repulsed and the 10th Panzer Division retired to Garba S. 2 U.S. Corps was unable to exploit the German failure and each attack was stopped by the 10th Panzer or 21st Panzer Division's counter-attacking up the road from Garba S. Coordination of Allied air and ground forces remained unsatisfactory. The 8th Army and the two U.S. Corps attacked for the next week and on March 28, the 8th Army captured El Hama, forcing the Axis to abandon Garba S and retreat north towards the 5th Panzer Army. The hills in front of the U.S. forces were abandoned, allowing them to join the British forces in Garba S later that day. The 2nd New Zealand Division and 1st Armoured Division pursued the Germans 225 kilometres northwards into defensive positions in the hills west of Enfordaville, which were held until the end of the campaign. Northern Sector On February 26, 
von Arnim, in the mistaken belief that the Kasserine battles had forced the Allies to weaken the North to reinforce the South, launched in turn a Minoxenkopf against B Corps, across a wide front and commanded by General Weber. The main attacks were by Corps Weber which had the 334th Infantry Division, newly arrived elements of the Hermann Gar Paragraph Ring Division and the part of the 10th Panzer Division not involved in Internum and Fra one quarter Linkswind. Weber's force was to advance in three groups, a central group moving west toward Mejiz El Bab, a second to the north advancing southwest, on the route from Mater to Bar Copyright Jar west of Mejiz, and the third group pushing west 25 miles south of Mejiz. The northern flank of Weber's corps was to be protected by the von Mantufel division advancing west and forcing the Allies out of their advanced positions opposite Green Hill and the Axis held Jeffner Station. Orsladung's aim sought to gain control of vital town of Jbel Abiod. This attack by the Mantufel division made good progress across the French held, lightly defended hills between Cap Serrat and the railway town of Sejanan. Costly counterattacks on February 27 and 2 March by part of the 139th Infantry Brigade, No. 1 Commando and supporting artillery delayed the Axis advance. Withdrawals of French battalions in the Meges area to join 19 Corps, left little opposition to the German occupation of the high ground dominating the town, which was left in a dangerous salient. As a result, Sejanan was abandoned by the British on March 4 and the 139th Infantry Brigade was pushed slowly back over the next three weeks some 24 kilometers toward Jbel Abiod. Equals Operation Oxenkopf equals. The main offensive, Oxenkopf led to fierce fighting, Camp Grupp Lang attacking in the northern sector were held up by a small force of artillery and a battalion of the Hampshire Regiment for a whole day at Sidi Nsir and Hampshire Farm before they could be overcome. This delay was critical and as a result the British force was able to prepare a significant killing field at Hunt's Gap northeast of Bar Copyright Jar. In the southern attack Camp Grupp Ordov made some progress was made west toward Mejiz El Bab but a British ad hoc force, Y Division was able to repel the southern attack. Particularly after two Churchill tanks shot up an entire German transport column at a place called Steamroller Farm. The final attack by Lang's battered force was stopped at Hunt's Gap by the 128th Infantry Brigade of the 46th Infantry Division with substantial artillery, RAF air cover and two squadrons of Churchill tanks from the North Irish Horse under command. Fighting lasted until March 5 and in terrible weather conditions the operation was called off by von Arnim. The failure had cost the Axis grievous losses in infantry as well as tanks particularly the loss of many of the heavy Tiger tanks. Oxenkopf was to be the last major Axis offensive by von Arnim's Panzer Army. On March 25, Alexander ordered a counterattack on the V Corps front and on March 28, Anderson attacked with the 46th Infantry Division, with the 138th Infantry Brigade, 128th Infantry Brigade in reserve and reinforced by the 36th Infantry Brigade, 1st Parachute Brigade and French units including a Tabor of Specialist Mountain Goumiers, the artillery of two divisions plus more from Army resources. In four days, it succeeded in recapturing all lost ground and took 850 German and Italian prisoners. On April 7, Anderson tasked 78th Infantry Division with clearing the Bar Copyright Jar Medges Road. Supported by artillery and close air support, they methodically advanced 16 kilometers through difficult mountain terrain over the next 10 days clearing a front 16 kilometers wide. The 4th Infantry Division joined the fighting, taking position on the left of the 78th Division and pushing towards Sijinais. Victory. Equals Allied plans equals. The salient at Medges had been relieved and lateral roads in the V Corps area cleared so that Anderson was able to turn his full attention to the orders he had received on April 12 from Alexander to prepare the large-scale attack, scheduled for April 22, to gain Tunis. By this stage, Allied aircraft had been moved forward to airfields in Tunisia to prevent the aerial supply of Axis troops in North Africa and large numbers of German transport aircraft were shot down between Sicily and Tunis. British destroyers operating from Malta prevented marine supply, reinforcement or evacuation of Tunisia by sea. Admiral Cunningham, Eisenhower's naval task force commander, issued Nelsonian orders to his ships, 
Sink, burn, capture, destroy. Let nothing pass. By April 18, after attacks by 8th Army from the south and flanking attacks by 9 Corps and French 19 Corps, the Axis forces had been pushed into a defensive line on the northeast coast of Tunis, attempting to protect their supply lines but with little hope of continuing the battle for long. Alexander planned that while US 2 Corps would attack on the north towards Bizert, 1st Army would attack towards Tunis while 8th Army attacked north from Enfordaville. Anderson would coordinate the actions of 1st Army and US 2 Corps, issuing the appropriate orders to achieve this. Anderson's plan was for the main attack to be in the center of the B Corps front at Medges, confronting main Axis defenses. However, 9 Corps on the right would first attack northeast with, by speed of movement, the intention of getting in behind the Medges position and disrupting their armored reserves. US 2 Corps would make a double thrust one to capture the high ground on V Corps left flank and a second toward Bizert. French 19 Corps would be held back until 9 Corps on 8th Army had drawn in the opposition and then advanced toward Pont Equals Battle equals. The Allied forces had reorganized and during the night of 19-April 20, the 8th Army captured Enfordaville against the Italian 16th Motorized Division Pistoia which counter-attacked several times over the next three days and was repulsed in the action at also Takrana took place. The northward advance of 8th Army had pinched out US 2 Corps eastward facing front line, allowing the Corps to be withdrawn and switched to the northern end of the Allied front. Arnhem knew that an Allied offensive was imminent and launched a spoiling attack on the night of 20-April 21, between Medges and Galbelat on the 9 Corps front. The Hermann Gar Paragraph Ring Division supported by tanks from 10th Panzer Division penetrated up to 5 miles at some points but could not force a general withdrawal and eventually returned to their lines. No serious disruption was caused to Allied plans, except that the first attack of the offensive, by 9 Corps, was delayed by 4 hours from 4 a.m. on April 22. On the morning of April 22, the 46th Division attacked on the 9 Corps front, creating a gap for the 6th Armoured Division to pass through by nightfall, followed by 1st Armoured Division, striking east for the next two days but not quick enough to forestall the creation of a strong anti-tank screen which halted their progress. The battle had drawn the Axis reserves of armour south, away from the Central Front. Seeing that no further progress was likely Anderson withdrew the 6th Armoured and most of 46th Infantry Divisions into Army Reserve. The V Corps attack began on the evening of April 22 and the two U.S. Corps launched their offensive in the early hours of April 23 in the Battle of Hill 609, in which the hill was captured, which opened the way to Bizert. In grim hand-to-hand -hand fighting against the Hermann Gar Paragraph Ring Division, 334th Infantry and 15th Panzer Divisions, it took V Corps with the 1st, 4th and 78th Infantry Divisions, supported by army tanks and heavy artillery concentrations, eight days to penetrate 9.7 kilometers and capture most of the Axis defensive positions. The fighting was mutually costly but in the Battle of Longstop Hill, Longstop was captured, which opened the way to Tunis and Anderson felt a breakthrough was imminent. On April 30, it had become clear to Montgomery and Alexander that an 8th Army attack north from Enfordaville, into strongly held and difficult terrain would not succeed. Alexander gave Montgomery a holding task and transferred the 7th Armoured Division, the 4th Indian Infantry Division and the 201st Guards Motor Brigade from the 8th to the 1st Army, joining the 1st Armoured Division which had been transferred before the main offensive, the redeployments were complete by the night of May 5. Anderson had arranged for a dummy concentration of tanks near Bu Arida on the 9 Corps front, to deflect attention from the arrival of the 7th Armoured Division in the Medjus sector and achieved a considerable measure of surprise as to the size of the armoured force when the attack began. The final assault was launched at 3.30 a.m. on May 6 by 9 Corps, commanded by Lieutenant General Brian Horrocks who had taken over from Lieutenant General John Crocker, who had been wounded. B Corps had made a preliminary attack on May 5, to capture high ground and secure the left flank of 9 Corps. The 4th and 4th Indian Divisions, concentrated on a narrow front and supported by heavy artillery concentrations, broke a hole in the defences for the 6th and 7th Armoured Divisions to pass through. On May 7, 
British armour entered Tunis and American infantry from two corps, which had continued its advance in the north, entered Bizert. Equals Axis surrender equals. Six days after the fall of Tunis and Bizert, the last Axis resistance in Africa ended with the surrender of over 230,000 prisoners of war. Major General Lucien King Truscott, commander of the U.S. 3rd Infantry Division and Major General Ernest Nation Harmon, commander of the U.S. 1st Armored Division, reported that German resistance in the American sector ceased on May 6 and German troops started surrendering en masse. On May 8, the 334th Division surrendered to the British forces between Mata and Tibotha. At 10 a.m. on May 9, the U.S. 2 Corps cornered Major General Gustav von Vest and what remained of the 5th Panzer Army, which surrendered before noon. At least 12,000 Germans surrendered in Major General Fritz Krauss's sector. Around 22,000 Germans in the mountainous Zaghauen sector also ceased fighting on May 11 and surrendered with their equipment to the Free French. British and Commonwealth forces reported 150,000 Axis prisoners taken in the German-held sector from May 5 to Euro June 12. Major General Count Theodore von Sponick, commander of the 90th Light Division, had surrendered unconditionally to the 2nd New Zealand Division, after threatening to fight till the last round. General Giovanni Mess, commander of the 1st Army, held the line north of Takrana and on May 12, cabled Commando Supremo vowing to fight on. At 7.55 p.m. That evening, after the German collapse, Mussolini ordered Mess to surrender. Next day, the 1st Army was still holding opposite Enfadavid but the remaining 80,000 men were surrounded. The RAF and artillery continued their bombardment and around noon, the 1st Army surrendered to the 8th Army. Aftermath equals Analysis equals. In 1966, the British official historian ISO Playfair wrote that. Had the Allies been able to get a tighter stranglehold on the Axis communications immediately after the torch landings, they might have won the gamble of the Tunisian campaign by the end of 1942, and victory in Africa as a whole might have been close. Conversely, the Axis might have staved off for a long time their defeat in May 1943 had their forces received the supplies they needed. The decision to reinforce North Africa was one of the worst of Hitler's blunders, admittedly, it kept the Mediterranean closed for six more months, with a negative impact on the Allied shipping situation but it placed some of Germany's best troops in an indefensible position from which, like Stalingrad, there would be no escape. Moreover, Hitler committed the Luftwaffe to fight a battle of attrition under unfavorable conditions, and it suffered losses that it could not afford. The Axis gamble had only slowed the inevitable and the U.S. defeat at Kasserine may have been paradoxically advantageous. With North Africa in Allied hands, Plans quickly turned to the invasion of Sicily and Italy. Joseph Goebbels wrote that it was on the same scale as the defeat in the Battle of Stalingrad. Tunisgrad was coined for the defeat. A victory march was held in Tunis on May 20, 1943 in which units of the 1st and 8th Armies and representative detachments of the American and French forces marched past, with bands playing and Generals Eisenhower, Alexander and Girold taking the salute. See also. Tunisian victory, list of World War II battles, military history of Italy during World War II. Notes, footnotes, citations, references. External links, The Green Howard's Regimental History, A Euro Bill Shield Story, The Irish Brigade, 38th Brigade at Bou Arada and Mejiz El Bab, January Euro April 1943, Tunisia Campaign on Internet Archive.